What is up, Tim? And sideways, you beautiful individuals. Welcome to another Rappy Health League. I'm Mark Eric and Mark here with you guys for finally now we can dive headfirst into this madness that is the LCK. Maybe it didn't live up to the absolute insanity we were expecting. A lot of guys stand put, but I'll tell you what. The Zeus Doran trade that wasn't actually a trade because they were both free agents and the speculated drama that comes with it, well, that's delivering on the hype for sure. Uh, well, let's just give uh, our audience a little bit of a warning. Make sure you get your helmet, your safety helmet out, because if we're diving head first into this one, it's some rocky territory that we're going to get There's into. There's no water in the pool. <laughs> no, it's all sharp, jagged rocks in this one when you're talking about how things played out between Zeus, T1, Hanwha Life, Doran, this whole situation. A lot of messy spaghetti when you're looking at this one. I think there is a way to kind of clear the plate a little bit, separate things out and understand exactly where things are, how things played out a little bit more than kind of the, let, let's say, art, massaged, you know, artificial language that comes through in a couple of these press release type of things. But man, oh man, what a wild turn of events this is. Zeus joining Hanwha Life and Doran coming over to T1. It, it looked like it was going to be the run back again. We were slowly ticking them off. Owner's back. Kiri is back. Guma's going to come back. Yep. Okay. Zeus is going to go to Hanwha Life. And obviously, there's a lot of drama from sources of sources around this whole thing with agencies that are representing both Keen and Zeus. And usually it's hard to take any of these with a grain of salt. But the biggest telltale that T1 was expecting to get Zeus back is having to cancel pre-orders on a whole lot of their merch because they were committed to the ZOFGK brand, selling it on merch with the five stars, having that Exodia assemble. All of a sudden, Zeus is gone, and they got to can that whole thing. Yep, in in the garbage bin for that one. Uh, the with Doran in the mix, uh, we're not gonna get into what that acronym is, but it ain't it ain't ringing the same as it was when Zeus was with the squad. It's incredible because, yes, that was where you, as T1, expecting him to sign and envision this is the future path of the organization moving through the SKT dynasty. Rough, some rough years figuring it out. You still had Faker as that legendary shining star. Here you were on the other end of that dark tunnel. Finally, again, a dynasty renewed with these young, talented players around Sidem. This was what you were going to build your empire upon. Set it forth. No more. No more. It is dashed in an instant with Zeus going over to Hanwha Life. Yes, there is some intricacies, some he said, they said, all these type of things to look through and rumors about how this negotiation went through. But at the end of the day, for me, I think it should be clear cut for a lot of people when you look through this one and understand at the end of the day, if Zeus wanted to be on T1, he would still be with T1. I think most of the rumored contract situations have a lot of these numbers very similar lining up in both dollar amount and term you know the way that the terms were signed out as far as one plus one two plus one all these type of things as far as the years went and you can't tell me that you weren't going to be getting a certain amount of percentage a certain amount of a kickback from all that merch that t1 was going to make around this roster so yes i think this is a clear cut wanting to separate wanting to do something on his own whatever the reasoning is for zeus it's his choice it's deserved choice in a free agency type of situation i think the way that it's been gone about the other situation involving keen and the agency things like that are gonna rub people the wrong way and rightfully so and we'll see there's speculation t1's gonna be pursuing some type of legal action towards this it seems like a real murky area in terms of getting anything to actually stick because let's be honest agents in it doesn't matter if it's esports or traditional sports a lot of the time there's some sleazy behavior going on that they can get away with but definitely something to monitor going forward but when you look at the actual changes drama aside first off you look at Hanwha Life with Zeus in that lineup that's the only change they're making this offseason, and that makes a terrifying team look even more terrifying. The momentum shift in the LCK has happened. It is uh, the the earthquake has already gone down. We've seen it. We're feeling the after effects at this point with Zeus joining Hanwha Life. You saw the rise that they went through this year 
coming from, you know, that middle of the pack in the LCK to, hey, you know, we're hovering around that, you know, three, four, maybe we're challenging for two. And then all of a sudden in summer, we're the top dogs. We are the number one seed from the LCK. How do you increase that? How do you keep that pressure on the rest of these top tier teams in the region? You had the best player available in free agency. Zeus coming into that top side. Yes, there were good moments for Doran with Hanwha Life. I don't want that to be forgotten, but there certainly were also some crucial mistakes at crucial moments for him. So to add Zeus and what talent and potential he brings to this roster, it is incredibly scary for the rest of the league. Four world champions on this Hanwha Life team. And I know often people say, well, you're, there's not enough resources. You've got three lane hungry uh, members to talk about with Zeka, Viper, and Zeus. But more often than not, when you're talking about the best teams in the world, all three lanes are win conditions that you can play through. Even if sometimes one of them has to play weak side, that's something we've seen Zeus do throughout his time on T1 or be the guy, the main character. So we're not worried about that whatsoever. T1 side of things, again, it becomes glaringly obvious Doran was not going to be their first choice. And we're kind of put in a tough scenario probably where there's not many people left to sign all of a sudden for 2025. They end up bringing Doran, but the disrespect that this guy is getting coming over to T1, you would think he's been on a bottom two team for the last five years and hasn't contributed anything, but he's been a top three top laner in the LCK for honestly the majority of his career. And as you mentioned, in some of the biggest matches has been able to dismantle Zeus in that head to head. Yeah, he's been Zeus' father domestically. No question yep. about that in those head-to-head -head so many times. We have seen that come down or in the crucial moments, you know, whether it was with Gen G or this iteration of Hanwha Life, Doran was able to get it done against Zeus in that head-to-head. -head. So looking at that one domestically, it's crazy. The disrespect. You'd think it was, you know, if they signed Lord Morgan, he'd be getting more respect than Doran is at this point, which is wild to me because Doran for the last half decade has no question to me been in that top three of LCK top laners. At times he's been the guy of the top lane in the LCK. It might not be as flashy or as exciting as, you know, what Zeus is capable of. It might not necessarily be as fully rock solid consistent as Keen can deliver for you. But I think there still is a lot of high potential available with a player like Doran. You can't tell me that putting him into the T1 system, playing alongside his idol, his favorite player, and Faker in the mid lane, and the rest of the talented and creative players, the coaching staff included with T1, that he's not going to hit higher highs. I, I can't believe it. This is going to be a good move for T1. There is still absolutely some risk involved in this one, and it's not... The all sunny, you know, roses picture ideal world, but it certainly is not the rain and, and gloom and doom that I have seen from some people online. Absolute good vibes from the past with Kyria and Doran as well on DRX. We know they go back and have great chemistry already. Obviously, I'm worried for Doran, number one. T1 has the biggest and most toxic fan base that there is. If they're sending trucks to T1 HQ, for their star-studded lineup, it's going to be so easy because he's the only roster change from the back-to-back -back world champions. It's so easy for Doran to be pegged as the scapegoat for this team if they don't do well. Before they've even played a game on the Rift, you know it's going to be inevitable. I think people should take a, a reality check in that situation and understand that, yes, you know, everything has been magical with this roster for T1. There have been struggles. There have been down times. There's been fluctuations in the performance. One game from Missing Worlds. And I don't think that's going to change with Doran necessarily. So there still is going to be that up and down type of road. Not necessarily saying that there won't be the success, the, uh, you know, the triumphs, the rising to the occasion that we have seen from this T1 when the situation matters the most. This is a wild take and a wild turn in the LCK. But you better buckle yourself up, folks, because this is what's happening. And the better, and the sooner we come to terms with it, the quicker you can start to get excited and find your reasons for hype for next year. Obviously, that top lane swap shakes up that top half of the LCK, but I think the contenders remain the contenders. And despite maybe taking a pay cut because his own agency was trying to use him as leverage to make Zeus more money, we get Keen returning to Gen G and. Canyon also coming back, Chovy signing a three-year deal and being reunited 
with his buddy Ruler in the bot lane. Somehow Genji shelled out the money. They didn't have enough to maintain Lahens, which is why Duro is going to be making his LCK debut. He's been on a couple different challenger scene teams over the last couple of years, but obviously Ruler coming back is the headline for Genji this offseason. Yes, if I'm keen though, I'm 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 pretty upset. I'm pretty peeved. I'm pretty gassed yeah. about how wow, this stuff played Aren't out. you trying to make Knowing, me more money? Even if you wanted to eventually end up with Gen G, yeah, the money situation thing, and then not having the opportunity presented to you, talked to you about about T1, about playing a fake, all I'd be pretty peeved about that one. But yes, the focus for Gen G is on Ruler's return. The prodigal son, the homegrown, talented superstar makes his return from the trip to the LPL. And yes, on a long-term deal, three-year signed contract, that's an important one to look at. I think it's you know, gonna be about the landscape of the LCK now with the salary cap being put in, how we see the terms, the, the, you know, the exact dollar amounts, the payout, all these type of things. They're gonna be massaged and managed in certain type of ways just to see the fallout later is gonna be it. But it's important to keep track of that with these two core members of this gen g team and yes even if keen's upset about not getting uh, as much money as zeus type of thing he can't complain too much on this roster because old doro is down in the bottom lane making that league minimum to make sure that they can fill out the the star-studded rest of the four members and i mean honestly as a rookie i feel like it's totally fine that paycheck and you say what's the lineup who am i playing with okay yeah, yeah you're, I, I, you're signing that pretty damn quickly you're feeling pretty good about that supporting cast that you're going to have with you in that debut. Uh, and for this Gen G team, operation is still the same. It is still the same goals. It is still that same site. Now with a little bit of extra pressure, though, because you have had the situation of not only domestically Hanwha life usurping you, dethroning you at that very top and adding in one hell of a weapon in Zeus in that top side. And then you've got T1 and what they did to you at the World Championship in that semifinals, that dismantling on the international stage, that rising to that biggest of occasions again, where you once again did not show your very best, that most dominant form that we know is capable for this Gen G team. And yeah, obviously still on paper, they're going to be one of, if not the favorites, to win that first LCK split. I got to say, I feel a little bad for the bot lane from last year. Number one, Lahans, I know his world championship wasn't great, but for the majority of 2024, you were talking about him as maybe the best support alongside Delight, not Kyria, in the LCK. And then he's rewarded by going on Nongshim. That's his opportunity that he has to go with. And then for Pays, the guy fills the massive shoes left by Ruler. And you just kind of say, okay, Ruler can come back. You're gone. And somebody like KT has taken Doc Dom over Pays? Huh? Yeah, that to me is the crazy one. I think Lahens and the quick hitter is unfortunate that he built himself up throughout the year. A lot of people, you know, there were doubters at various times, but then they got, oh, here's this performance and here's this type of thing or whatever to show that he was someone to consider in these top tiers of the supports heading into the world championship. And then that world championship performance did not show that type of performance that type of skill set that we had seen from him and have argued about for him now gets a bit of a prove me type of situation whereas i think a lot of people felt like he did already prove that he was one of the high-end support options in the lck doesn't get one of those high-end type of opportunities with nong shim and pays this is the more crazy one to me to say that he has stepped in you've got what is it now three-time lck champion msi champion pays as a you know incredibly young talented player 18, and doesn't get 18 one of years these old does not get one of these opportunities no team says this is a, an unbelievable prospect that has been let go for whatever reason circumstances that is a miracle for the rest of these middle tier teams anyone lower in the lck to grab get a hold of and say this is it you're our star. We're going to build around you. We're going to fill this out. Nobody took that chance. Nobody. And you're telling me that you wanted to go with Doc Dom? KT? Which, look, again, I've, I've stuck up for Doc Dom. He's my boy. And sometimes there are some shortcomings. There have been some bad performances. There was not a very great year in the LPL. And you're going back to that? I don't know about this one. Yeah, and I know <clears throat> Pays is... Now rumored to go on the LPL, probably JDG. He's probably going to get a sizable payday. Oh, but I this so. this version of JDG, even if Kanavi ends up staying, who's also rumored to be leaving, there's still a lot of rumors floating in the LPL. 
You're looking at a middle tier LPL team at best. It's it's hard to see Pays landing on a contending team in the LPL, which is too bad because we've been treated to some masterclass performances out of him, both domestically and internationally, still only at 18 years old. Not to be outdone by Ruler returning to Gen G. We got another general returning to where his career started. Barrel. Fresh off of some Genshin Impact event says, yeah, hold up. My phone's on silent. I can't answer till later. But he's coming back to D plus Kia alongside rookie challenger player Siwoo getting the promotion in the top lane. Which, hey, let, let's make it very clear here. Doran's got a passion for Genshin Impact. And don't you let anybody dissuade you from chasing it and being dedicated to your passion the way that, oh, my man, old Barrel is for this game. And yes... He was a free agent, so everything was okay. So he was allowed to go to this type of event type of thing. But yes, reunited with D plus key, reunited with Showmaker. And I tell you what, you better believe Showmaker is going to be happy to have that weight lifted off of his shoulders. Those extra responsibilities of all the shot calling, that general gameplay, that barrel can bring to a team from that bottom lane at a championship level. Showmaker is going to breathe a lot easier not having to do all that heavy lifting for the team. Especially with another rookie now coming alongside young player in Lucid, who had a pretty damn good rookie year, all in all. But having a younger roster, sounds like aiming will also be returning as that starting ADC. But ever since Barrel left, that's the main knock that's been on D+. Is they don't know what to do shot calling. Their macro gameplay is abysmal. Q Barrel's return. And hopefully that shores up some of those main issues D+, has had for like two, three years. I, I think it will because I'm going to side on the side of going with what I view aiming is as a player and as an ADC and what he is capable of. You put in some of that piloting, some of that commanding from Barrel alongside him, keeping him a little bit more safe, a little bit not so crazy at times. I think that could be a secret for some of these team fights for D plus Kia. You laid out Lucid as well. I think he's another young player that can benefit from that strategy, from the shot calling that will come through and communicating with Barrel in the bottom lane. This is a, a wonderful move for D plus Kia. The problem is going to be, of course, with Zeus going to Hanwha Light. Gen G re up and getting Ruler back in there. T1 being T1 and just what they are. It's hard to see them making any type of ground in the LCK, even if we are positive about this barrel move. Yeah, and that is where Siwu coming up is kind of the question mark. As a rookie top laner, how does he hold up against that upper echelon of LCK top laners? We know he had like 70 something solo kills throughout the challenger scene, but. It's a different beast when you get promoted to the LCK. We'll see what his confidence level is at initially in the big leagues. Yeah, the confidence is going to be a big part of that, and especially knowing just the environment, right? The vibes that go on with a showmaker team with D plus Kia. Having that type of confidence in yourself is going to be a big part of it. I don't think... Kingen didn't really exude a lot of that type of confidence no, 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 no. In, in his gameplay, so it's going to be a different vibe for sure for D plus Kia. And I think even if Cebu doesn't reach that insane hype, still probably going to be an upgrade over what you were getting at times from King and uh, throughout that last split. And so that top half is looking pretty damn good. A team hoping for that final playoff spot is the Kwong Dong Freaks and some familiar faces returning. Bulldog and Dudu both coming back, but the big changes, Piosic coming over, and we've been waiting to hear where that former LCS MVP Berserker is going to end up. And alongside life in the bot lane, he's landing in KDF. How do we feel about that as a landing spot for Berserker? Unsure about this one for Berserker because, yes, you talked about it already. Aiming for one of those final playoff spots, not necessarily the, the positioning I was going to imagine someone like Berserker would hopefully have. I think I was looking for maybe a little bit more uh, upper end contention, but yes, this is a good spot for him. I think at the end of the day, when you look at the rest of this lineup and the young talent that is going to be there, there still is going to be some things to talk about. One with this Kwong Dong Freaks team, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe CV Max has stepped away, is moving away from the organization. So there will be a coaching change that will be going down. And that's notable because because of the guy in the mid lane, Bulldog. That is gonna be the important piece for me. Yes, 
we can talk about this bottom lane and then there's a lot to go with there and everything else but for me it's about does bulldog take that next step because if he's not taking that next step to be another level of efficiency another level of lethal in that mid lane in the lck this is a team that's going to be struggling against those top end teams not able to generate the one-off the upset win here or there that does start to separate you from that middle tier to start letting you climb in to those upper tiers like you will want to if you're this Kwangdong freaks team berserker joining the, the bottom lane excuse me alongside life i'm extremely excited about this one because i think life has gone through you know some rough patches but still is an incredibly talented player and you can go back to of course the gen g era to look back at some of these things and, and what you would hypothesize about adding alongside them berserker's got a lot of skill and i can't wait to see it in the lck yeah and you know he hasn't played with an actual korean support in a while you know he's been he's been sandbagging had the ankle weights of the lcs no offense to zen and vulcan and some of his previous supports but... he must have been, he must have been going out for some uh, korean barbecue with piosik while they were over in the L in the lcs and this is it they cooked up the dream back in the lck back home and listen, you know, Piosik was pretty good last split, so bringing him over, uh, I know he can have his inconsistencies, but he is a guy who can take over a game in that jungle spot, and uh, on paper across the board, I feel like this roster is still an upgrade for KDF from what you got last year, depending on what that top half is for D-plus in 2025, KDF should easily be 5 or 6 in the LCK. Uh and bear with me, I think that if you are a team like KDF and you have the aspirations to not just be a playoff team, but hopefully start to climb up, start to claw away at those established top four ahead of you, you might have to take a risk on a guy like Piosik who can offer you these game-changing performances, but doesn't necessarily maybe have the consistency, the, you know, the conservative temperament that you might also get from a more traditional type of jungler, a traditional success type of jungler. Piosik, I think, is one of these, you know, swing for the fences, along with Berserker coming from <clears throat> the LCS, that you got to take if you're KDF to try and climb up this LCK ladder. I will say if you're Berserker and goals, your end goal was Worlds for this year, good luck, because that top half of the <laughs> LCK is looking even more stacked this year than last year. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for hanging out. As always, we will catch you 